Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Homer with this mountain weather update. We'll talk about this wet June outlook that I'm forecasting, but first I want to go to live radar. So I'm going to take you up. This is the uh, the live radar source out of Idaho Falls, Idaho, and it's showing a lot of thunderstorms across Idaho, even a couple of severe ones, but there's a pretty big batch moving across the Tetons right now. Um, I'll just mark it. So there's Jackson, there's Teton Village, all these storms moving up and towards the northeast. And that's this is not the only place that we're seeing thunderstorms. Back here in Colorado, we've got some uh, showers and thunderstorms developing across the Front Range. One of them actually is severe. This one right here heading towards Fort Morgan, but we've got showers and thunderstorms scattered over the mountains. And we're seeing showers and thunderstorms in Salt Lake City as well. Let me take it to uh, radar there. Most of the action is off towards the west of Salt Lake, but uh, all this is heading up towards Idaho. I show you this because this is what I expect to continue, this pattern all the way through probably the first week of June, maybe even the second week. But right now it's looking like showers and thunderstorms are going to be likely um, pretty much that entire period, every afternoon. Here's the, uh, the live view. Uh, this is from Arapahoe Basin here in Colorado. You can see there's a thunderstorm sliding over the mountains there. This is the view off to the west, southwest. And uh, again, we are in this pattern. We're seeing a rich flow of moisture right now. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So June looks wet. I wrote about it this morning. So there's also this, this part of the forecast where on days when we get heavier precip, it's going to depress the temperatures, the air temps. So the freezing levels are going to be high most days. But on days where we get heavier precip, it's going to bring those down. And we may even see some light snow accumulation above 12,000 in Colorado, Utah, Wyoming on some of these days where we get these heavier batches and richer, richer, richer flows of moisture. Um, is this normal as we slide into early June? Sometimes we can get a, a wet May to spill over into early June. But what I'm seeing goes above and beyond that. We could see total precipitation in the first 10, 14 days of June that go 2 to 300% of normal. And I'll show you that forecast coming up. But this is the rich flow. So this is precipitable water. I've shown this a few times in these, these mountain weather forecasts. But this shows you the anomalies, the moisture that is used to fuel rain and thunderstorms. And this is what's used in the afternoons. That's why we see these afternoon variety showers and thunderstorms after the heating of the day has its chance to do its thing and we start to get convection. And then it sucks up these thunderstorms, suck up this moisture. And where you see the green and the blue is that's like 200% of normal. And that's valid on the 3rd of June. So that's, uh, that's coming up. That's a few days away. So this rich flow of moisture from the Gulf and from the Pacific will continue I believe, into the first week of June, if not the second week as well. And what are the target zones? Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, parts of Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, Montana. All of that, even potentially parts of the Sierra. And the issue here is when you look at these setups, I like to look at all the levels. So look at the subtropical jet. You can see it right here. See it down. It's coming out of the Pacific, hitting the Baja of California, and it, it's opening the door for all this. It's making it possible. It's bringing in that Pacific moisture. In some ways, it reminds me a little bit of the, uh, the atmospheric river setup that we had in California and across the West over parts of this, uh, this winter, where it's just grabbing that rich Pacific moisture and it's bringing it into the West. So we're seeing that at jet stream level. And lower pressures are going to dominate during this time frame. Lower pressures generally bring stormy weather. And you can see it with the blues here across the southern tier of states. We're going to have these areas of low pressure just constantly sliding through like a parade. Now let me take this full and show you what I'm talking about. Global forecast system. This is valid. This is valid on the 6th of June. Look at this. Low pressure after low pressure sliding off the Pacific through the southern tier of states, bringing all this moisture in and then wringing it out. The atmosphere is flooded with extra moisture. That means afternoon rain and thunderstorms likely all of those days. And again, that's the 6th of June. Look at this. This is the 15th of June. Same thing. A little bit of a different variation, but still looking at lower atmospheric pressures across most of the West. So again, 
while I say this is likely the first week of June, it could very well, and there's data to support that it goes into the second week of June. Now, typically the third and fourth week of June are some of the driest weeks on record. And normally for the West, that's only if this pattern breaks, because if this pattern continues, then it's going to end up being wet. All right, let me go back to this. and I want to show you a couple other things. Look at this total precip forecast from the climate forecast system. Look at the West. This is an this is an aggregation, an accumulation of, of rainfall or total precipitation between the 3rd of June and the 13th of June. In some cases, you see the blues, that's 300% of normal or more for parts of the Intermountain West. So uh, it looks to me like across the data that this forecast is pretty well supported. Um, forecast freezing levels, and this is what I was talking about. So in Colorado, they're high. They're way above the 14ers by day now. But they actually get depressed on the first, the second, and parts of the third. When the, some of this, this surge moves in, the freezing levels fall. And we could see some light snow above 12,000 on those days in Colorado. In the Wasatch, high freezing levels. Um, there's a slight depression, but not as significant. So pretty high snow levels. Very high, in fact. Probably have to go to the high Uintas. The Tetons get a little more of a suppression or depression, so you could have some snow above 12,000 there. Forecast timing. Let me take you into the forecast radar and satellite. So on Wednesday morning, quiet. But in the afternoon, everything flares up. Heating of the day across the Intermountain West. Quiet again. And then by Thursday afternoon, this is a pretty good surge of moisture right there. And it's still there in the morning on Friday. And there's a lot of action in the afternoon on Friday. Still there in some places Saturday morning. And a big, uh, a big flux there in the afternoon. You can see how those surges, not only do they bring the afternoon action, but there's sometime it's left over in the morning. And that is so reminiscent of what would happen in monsoon season in July and August. So what we're seeing now just goes above and beyond what would typically be expected in the month of June. So there you go, guys. Um, that's the way it looks right now. It looks like we could be in for a wet June or at least start to wet uh, June to the month of June. Always appreciate you tuning in here. Thanks and take care.